You are now tuned in to Hot Topics with Donna. And on this show, we do one thing. Keep it real hot. That's honest, open, and transparent. If you didn't know, now you know. So sit back and unwind as we bring the vibe and a little bit of glorious sunshine to your heart, soul, and mind. Your lovely host, Hot Donna, will be with you in just a few moments. But while you wait, go ahead and set an atmosphere of peace in your space. If you can, cut the lights down low, get your hydration on, vibration zone. Cause tonight, you're about to receive some delicious food for your soul. with Donna. Hey, Sissy, how are you today? Thank you for joining. I am going to um, welcome you guys to another episode of Hot Topics with Donna. Hot is honest, open, and transparent. And on this show, we're just um, embracing people that have stories that need to be told. So today I am interviewing a lovely lady, a beautiful lady. Um, so we're going to get started. I'm going to send her a um, invite so we can get this interview started. I am so excited. I hope you guys watched um, last night. Um, interview with the author Angelie Austin and so tonight I am interviewing someone else that's close and dear to me and can't wait for you to hear her story so we're gonna wait uh, Karen how are you doing today and so like I said I am your host Donna Taylor I am just coming to you um, just to showcase different people I have had some amazing, amazing, amazing guests on here since I started this journey, and I'm so thankful that God is really doing awesome things with my guests on here, that they are blessing people. So we're just going to get started. I'm going to wait for her to come on. I am still early, so I um, just want to make sure that we get on so we can get off. She's going to be coming from Washington. Fort Washington, Maryland. Hey, Terry, how are you? Thank you for joining. So I'm just giving her some time to get on. So just um, kick back and just enjoy it. Um, thank you again for all the support that I've been getting on this show. I can't do it without you. I don't take it for granted that you guys come on here every Monday and Tuesday when I have Hot Topics with Donna. And I still have some amazing, amazing guests that's going to be still gracing us with your presence. I think my camera's still trying to freeze up. Um, Gina, I just need you now to accept the invite and then we will get started. I sent you an invite, so just look for it and we're going to get started. 
because I am excited. We had to rearrange some things um, with this um, lovely person as well. But nevertheless, we're gonna get started. Just go to your um, notifications, Gina, and just accept my invite and I will bring you in. I will bring you in. <laughs> Oh, thank you, sissy. You know I try to keep it hot. You know, you know me. You know, you know. Okay, I think she has accepted it. And I am getting ready to excited. And she's gonna be coming on shortly. We're gonna get this done. Hey, hey. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Can you hear me? Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna um, just introduce you her me? and then I'm gonna allow her to tell you who she is. Um, this is Gina Jackson. She lives in Fort Washington, Maryland, and she is my niece. And so I'm excited to be able to have her on so she can share her um, story with you guys and hope you you be blessed by her story because she definitely has a story, can, especially for our young mother. Can you hear me on, Donna? Let them know that you can do anything that you set your mind to and so gina just tell everybody who you are and then we'll get started can you hear me can you hear me a little bit yeah talk louder talk louder uh-huh hold on put my other airpod in is this better can you hear me better now um yeah let me see if i can cut mine up just a little bit okay if not, I have it on my iPad. Can, I can, can switch. you hear her? Yeah, can someone let me know if you can hear me? I can switch it to my phone if need be. I'm on my iPad. Okay, Karen, just let me know if you can hear her and then she can um, switch it out. Yeah, let me know if you can hear me, please. And then I'll All switch right. it. If okay, well. Uh, Did she say she can hear uh, me? She hasn't said, Karen, can you hear her? Hey, Janae, thank you for joining. I'm waiting for Karen to tell me if she can hear you or not. Okay. She said she can. Oh, she said, yes, I can. Okay. 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 Okay, perfect. Hi, everyone. I'm Gina. I'm Gina Jackson. I am um, Donna's niece. I am her brother's daughter. Um, I'm an, I am an, I just graduated. I'm a single mom. My birthday is tomorrow. So I'm a young single mom. Um, I recently just graduated with my bachelor's in psychology, actually um, two weekends ago. Um, my major was psychology. My minor was African-American studies just because um, I'm really big on um, mental health in the black community. And I think me doing the research and really getting to know the struggles that African-Americans have faced from the very beginning will really help to bridge the gap of getting African-Americans to trust um, doctors and um, health professionals more, because as we know, that's a huge gap as well. Oh, thank you. Someone say happy birthday. <laughs> that's a huge gap that we have as well. Um, getting African-Americans and just black people in general to trust health people, health providers is a big thing. We all know about all the different experiments that have been done on right. us and everything. So um getting a better understanding of that and really understanding it as a black woman raising a black son especially um i felt like that is something that could really help with my career trying to be a mental health professional um so my goal is to help my goal is to have my own practice um i want to start with children though so i would actually be going back to school in august for my um educational counseling um mastery and then i'll be getting my doctorate after that so we're just gonna keep it going Okay, so um, I know you was publishing a magazine um, in in Washington, and so um, the title was "Striving for a Stable Future," and it's called the Young. The Young is the name of the magazine, right? The name of the magazine. It was the um, 
the institute the art institute of washington it's a really big um it's a really big place out here in dc i'm sure a lot of people have heard of it it's amazing um but it was the art institute they did an article about um young single parents and how they're balancing doing both being a successful parent and being a successful student or worker or whatever you're doing Okay, so I'm going to read what they um, wrote because I have my paper. <laughs> okay. I, I loved your interview. I watched the interview. Um, and so Aww. it says, Gina Jackson's face lights up when she about her. He's eight now, right? Yes, ma'am. You got it. I think she's froze. Hold on. Okay, because you're froze. You're froze right now. I'm, I'm frozen. Can you still hear me? Your, your screen is froze. I'm a, I'm a switch on, to my phone. I'm to switching to my phone screen. right now. Okay, okay. So while she's switching, okay, Karen, I think she's going to switch to her. Uh, I think she's going to switch. Karen, can you still hear me? Okay, Karen, can you hear me now? Sis, can you hear me? <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to wait for Gina to come back on. Okay, Gina, so let me see if I have to send her another invite, guys. Just hold on. So she still should. So Gina, just hit. Um... Okay. Okay, well, so as you know, you guys, just, just coming on, I'm interviewing my niece, my brother's daughter, Gina Jackson, and um, she told her story about how I see. <laughs> about I'm back. <laughs> oh, yeah, much better. I can hear you now. So I'm going to read the article, what they started off saying. Okay. Yes. And so it says, Gina Jackson's face lights up when she talks about her. At this time in 2019, it, he was only six, but he is eight years you old now. It. And his name is Caden, who she considers her best friend and biggest supporter. When Jackson, a 27-year-old single mom in Fort Washington, Maryland, decided to go back to school for her bachelor's degree while working full-time, she wanted to make sure Caden was on board with the change. He's been dealing with anxiety since his father was incarcerated and she worried about how disrupting disrupting their daily routine would be after would affect him. So <clears throat> when I was reading this, you know, because I don't know the whole logistics of, you know, I can't see your beautiful face. Get that. I hope everybody can see you. So um <laughs> the question that I want. Um, to know is she's Karen said we're good now. The question that I want <laughs> to know and for people is how has um, Caden's father been incarcerated affected him with his anxiety and everything? Um, can you hear me okay, Aunt Donna? Uh huh. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, yeah, I can. Caden's anxiety didn't start until his dad was gone, actually. Um, and it took me a long okay. time to even realize something was happening. We would go to birthday okay. parties with kids and um, it would be a large crowd of people and he would panic and cry and he'd be clinging on to my leg. And obviously I'm just like, what is happening right now? I was going through my own depression um, and that's something we could talk about too, but I was going through my own depression um, and I'm just trying to figure out what is wrong with my kid. You know, he went from being this really happy, really, you know, everywhere kid. And then all of a sudden he was down and crying when we would go places, public places and birthday parties, anywhere where it was a crowd of people. Um, I remember going through it, telling my mom about it. And then I ended up taking him to the doctor and just like kind of explaining it to them because his dad had been at every visit. And one of the doctors kind of mentioned like, we haven't seen his dad anymore. I let them know, well, he's in jail. Um, 
Right. And then I just kind of started talking about how it's been. Like, you know, it's been hard for me, but it's been really hard for Kaden. He's just had a hard time right. adjusting. I've just noticed a difference in him. And she said, have you ever considered therapy? And at the time, he was three and a half, about to be four. So it took a yeah. good, because um, Jamal's been gone since Kaden was two. So by then, he's almost right. four. So this is two years now I've been dealing with him and these these panic attacks where he'd be screaming out on him. Um, right. So I'm asking the doctor, and she's like, have you considered therapy? And I'm like, for a four-year-old and she's like yes right, right. and she's like here's the thing if you would have told me the second his dad was gone I would have said put him in therapy and she was like you want to know why because even at two any type of large adjustment like that you mm -hmm. need someone to walk you through how to deal with it um right I found a therapist. I wanted um, a therapist who specialized in that medicine. Um, I wanted somebody who was holistic, um, who was spiritual, right. who believed in God. I had a lot of a lot of things that I was checking off on this list when right, I found right, this therapist. Right. right. Um, found her. She was an amazing black woman in Clinton, Clinton, where we grew up. She was in right. Clinton. Um, amazing and she just made such a difference. And then he ended up going to kindergarten and I just noticed he flourished, you know? Um, and mm -hmm. then I took him out for about five or six months. And she just gave me, it was like learning through play. So basically she just gave me so many tips. She let me know he is not the type of kid where you will ever be able to surprise him. You need to always right. make sure you are letting him know, okay, Kaden, we're going to this. This is how many people are going to be there. It's going to be a lot right. of kids. Some of those kids may run up to you. It's That's a good thing. They're excited to see you. Um, and then I took him out for about almost a year. And then I started showing the signs of it again, right when he started first grade, I put him right back in. <laughs> and um, when he went back that second time, it was he like, oh, because then he could, he was in a place where he could really express himself. Oh gosh, I'm done. he did amazing. He would come out. And here's the thing, I'm a single mom. So I now have my son in therapy. I'm working right, full time right. and I'm in school. So I would be rushing home. I didn't get off till six. I would be asking my boss, hey, can I get off at five? Because I was working in Virginia and living in Fort Washington. Right. That's an hour right. drive in traffic. So I would mm -hmm. be rushing home to get Kaden and then drive the 20 minutes to Clinton to make sure I got there by seven o'clock. I'm sitting in the lobby of the thing doing homework once he got comfortable enough to kind of go in there alone. And it's, she had a small practice, so it was amazing. I was right outside the door. But once right. he was comfortable, I was literally rushing home, sitting in the lobby of her place doing homework. Like, that's how bad it was. And I'm just listening. I would tap, hey, is he okay? And he's like, I'm great, mommy. Like, and that, right. lived, that was my life. And I did that every other Friday for a year. I took him out for a year, did it again for six months. And that was my every other Friday. I'm doing homework in the lobby at eight o'clock at night of a therapy, a therapy session because my son now has severe anxiety. Um, Eight-year-old Caden though, eight-year-old Caden is a mess. Eight-year-old Caden is happy. Um, and that's the thing, even so with all no, of this. So no, so like I know you and Jamal was together Mm -hmm. prior to the incarceration so did you feel um some people like did you feel shunned or like embarrassed at first to say wow i need to get my son help because of his dad being incarcerated because even like you said even at two that's a major change it's almost like mm -hmm. a death because you see this person every day and yep. then all of a sudden bam he is gone they are gone no you know like because he can't articulate like where is he going mm -hmm. so did you feel hesitant to get him in therapy because of what you thought people may say well that's an amazing question so because it was two years later by that point on donna i just needed help for my baby um but even with that if they would have told me two years before when he was two years old if she if i would have told her and she would have said gina put him in therapy i would have did it um, I'm the type of parent and just woman in general, I would rather fix it when it's a small issue than allow it to become a big issue. I, I, right, I was in there right. saying, test him for autism, test him for this, test him for every, anything that you feel right. like you want to test him for because he would, uh, he's always been, he, from a baby, he's always been really sensitive to loud noises. So I was like, you know, right. test him for autism. I've always worked right. with children. So I'm like, anything that, if you can diagnose him with something, you let me know because I need to know and we're going to work on it. So no, there was never a time um, where I was ashamed. I went right in there. Hey, I let the 
I went right in that therapist's office. This right. is what's wrong with my baby. This is what happened. Fix him because I need my baby to be my baby. So no, it was never any shame. Yeah, there was never any shame. I just wanted him to be better. So since he's been incarcerated, or before, let me ask you this. How, so now he has anxiety. So how, how do you handle it? Because now you have a baby, a toddler that has anxiety. So how was your own anxiety level trying to cope with your change as well? Um, that's, that's another amazing question. My, you need to go ahead and be Oprah girl. Um, <laughs> my, <laughs> my, um, I've always had pretty bad anxiety. I get anxious right. before stuff. And it's so funny because anyone who knows me, they're like, Gina, you would never know because you're so confident. You're so this. Right. I get really bad anxiety um, before anything. And at this point, I'm going through this man who I was in a relationship with. Now, yes. Like you said, it's almost like a death. I had, yeah. you know, you know, I had, I first started messing with Jamal. I'm 29 now. I first started messing with Jamal when I was 15. So, right. This is somebody who had been in my life, even when he wasn't my man, even is just right. my friend. And I lost yeah. it. And I was very codependent on him. Um, right. And I lost that literally overnight. He was here one day and then the next day he wasn't. And I was trying to figure out what's going on. That's how my life changed. That's the shift that right. my life took. He right. was here right. one day and then literally the very next day he was gone. Um, and I was being harassed by the police. So not only was I dealing with the a son where that anxiety it didn't happen immediately with Caden uh, the immediate was every time he saw a black car it was is that my daddy where's dad right. mommy where's dad at? is dad coming home so you mean so black car in reference to police car. that was the car no 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 okay. that was the car okay. his dad was driving um I okay. had two okay. cars so I had just got I had a white Nissan and I had already had my black Chevy Cobalt right. so I was driving right. a Nissan his dad was driving a Cobalt so two-year-old Caden is it, the anxiety part hadn't kicked in yet it was more so where's dad at is dad at coming? So I'm driving that black car. Is that dad at mama? Dad, is that dad at mommy? Like, where's dad at? That was it. Freezing. Is it freezing still? Try to shift. Hello? Hey, try to shift a little bit. You sh you're freezing. You froze. Can you hear me? Gina. I see, you should can you hear me now? Um, you're freezing a little bit. Yeah, I can hear you, but I can't see you. Okay, hold on. Let's see what we can do some things. So while she's um, you 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 gotta come. You not on hold camera on. yet. There you go. Okay. Hold on. Oh, is okay. it's working? Yep. Is it working you. now? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You good. hold on. You're it's not. I hear myself. Hold on, Adonna. It's doing something where it's going back. It's, I like okay. hear myself. Are you <laughs> it's like a feedback, but why is she still working on her end trying to get um, everything together? So basically right now, this part of the interview, we're talking about um, her two-year-old. Uh, she'll come back on. I'll get her back on. So we're going to still do it. We're talking about her two-year-old at that time. Um, dealing with anxiety and um, a whole lot of other different stuff with the incarceration of his father and her being a single mom codependent on her baby's father and how that transition how she had to go through the transition as well and so this is very powerful because he is a young african-american son or child but yet and still his life has been turned upside down and so now we're at the um, point where I just asked her how was her anxiety level because now you have a child um, anxiety level that has been affected but hers has too so I want to know how hers was affected in the aspect of how she's still trying to cope and deal with trying mm -hmm. to make her and preserve her son's mental health as well as her own can you hear me now Mm-hmm. Perfect. So, okay. Yeah. So at that point, I was dealing with a lot of, like I said, Caden was two and the anxiety hadn't 
quite kicked in yet, but the immediate of his dad was being gone was, like I said, every black car, because his dad drove a black car, every black car, mommy is that dad, dad. If it's mommy, is that dad, dad? Mama, is that dad, dad? Um, so not only am I dealing with that, I'm dealing with my own depression. I'm being harassed by the police. I'm miserable. I literally cried all day. I cried all day. My right, mom used right. to have to text me and ask me if I ate. Like, Gina, did you eat today? Gina, did you drink some water right, today? Right. Because my life couldn't stop. I still had to go to work because now I was completely okay. providing for Caden alone. So um, it was a lot. And then the anxiety kicked in. So now I'm depressed and sad and I'm down a lot or I'm miserable. Um, and it was just little things like that that would be happening. Um, and it, it was just a ball of it, a ball of depression. I was anxious. I was miserable. Um, I had a wall up with a lot of people. And then I kind of went through a phase where um, I kind of felt like, okay, you're a single adult. Go enjoy life. So I started going out more, um, stuff that I hadn't done before. Just I just right. started, I was just different. I went through a very dark phase. I can say that. I just mm -hmm. went through a dark period. I was still his mom. I was still, at that point, I was getting my... Um, it's a child development, child development associates degree, um, but it's right. a certification. So at that point, before my bachelor's, I was getting that. So I was actually in school then too. So I right. was in school for that. I was dealing with that. I had to get him back in daycare. I had to figure out, Gina, how are you going to, we went from rotating. He would pay every other week in daycare to me paying for everything by myself, my car note. So paying for everything. everything is on you yeah. now exactly and it was overnight like I said so my anxiety to answer you, my anxiety was horrible I was depressed um I lost so much weight and I, I was just miserable if I'm being um completely honest I was just very very miserable and on top of that trying to be a mom so right so and that was Kaden, six years ago father now? do he oh, yeah. have any um um so he goes to visit him mm-hmm so well, not right now because of the pandemic. But were you angry at any point? Was you angry with Jamal at any point for uh, um, putting you and Kaden through this? Did you ever at any point get angry with him? Absolutely. Absolutely. Can you hear me, Aunt Donna? <laughs> yeah, you uh -huh. can hear me? Oh. Absolutely. I was absolutely uh -huh. angry. I was angry. I was mad. I was sad. I was depressed. He was going to, I was angry for years. It's been, that was October, 2015. It's now, what is this? Um, May, 2021. So it, it was about three, four years, probably about four years of anger. I was very, very angry. I'm not anymore, but I was very, very, very angry. Yes. Um, yeah. Anger, anger is putting it lightly honestly anger is being nice about it i was pissed <laughs> so yeah i mean and that's and that's what you know this is about being honest open and transparent yeah. because a lot of times you know you're you're young and had a child and so now the father of your child you know and i don't know if you all have plans to be together as you know husband and wife but right. just plan to be together as a family unit and now he's gone he's incarcerated so yeah. do Caden, um, before, do Caden go visit him or have any type of visitation so they can continue to um, have a bond with each other? Caden and Jamal have an amazing relationship. Um, the, since the pandemic, um, we haven't been able to see him, but he does Skype like three right. times a week with Caden. Um, they have an amazing, amazing relationship. He loves his dad. He knows his dad. Um, he's been to see him in multiple, we've been to multiple jails. We do, um, the jail he's at now, the, the one he's going to be at for a little while. Um, they do something called a family day where it's right. like a huge picnic <laughs> and the, okay, the okay. inmates get to come out, their families come. Mm -hmm. At first it was an issue because I wasn't his wife. I'm, I'm nothing to Jamal. We're not together, but a lot of the times they only let the wives come and bring right. the kids so it was a little bit of an issue at first okay. i don't know i mean i guess good behavior they just were like let her let her come so because he was like you know i can see my son is if she brings him so yeah we do it's called they obviously didn't do it last year because of the pandemic but yep it's a big family day he goes to that and it's literally like a big cookout picnic thing for all the inmates and their families okay and you get to have like four people and Caden goes and has the time of his life and he play i sit down the whole time and i let him play with his dad it's like four hours four or five hours of him just being able to play okay. with his dad the whole day um and they have all these games set up and everything so yeah but no he talked they sit on the phone 
he calls my phone, I give it right to Kaden. And we we have right. a decent so relationship how, too. So how um how was the initial visit when Kaden started going? So did you kind of like because you said before with his anxiety, you had to prepare him and say, Hey, mm -hmm. this is what's gonna happen. So how was um how the did first you prepare visit. him? To, to go to the first, I mean, because this is different now. You He's seeing him in a different light. So how did you prepare him for this visit? Um, so I went alone first. The very first okay. visit, I remember it was, it was uh, the day after my birthday in 2016, because okay. he's been gone since 2015. So it was the day after, so my birthday is May 27th. It was May 28th. Right. Um, when he was at PG County Jail and I went, I went myself and I just, I went through the whole process because I wanted to see what it was going to be like. I needed to see if I wanted to bring my son into this situation. Um, so I went myself, saw how it was, saw how everything was going to be, went home, told Caden, hey, this is this. And at that jail, we could go basically whenever we wanted. So just let him know like, hey, you know, and I asked him, by then he was uh, three and a half and I just asked him like, hey, oh no, he was three. And I'm just like, do you want to go see daddy? And he's like, yes. Like, I really, he had been talking to him on the phone. He did like one or two with him. So at that right. point, he's like, I want to see my dad. Um, so I'm like, yeah. So we took him and I just warned him like, hey, it's going to be I, this. The way I explained it to Kaden, the, the, the first way I explained it to Kaden was daddy is in jail. And he is in jail because he did something wrong. And um when and he was like okay what is that and i'm like you you go to you know how mommy tells you to go to your room when you're acting up and he's like yeah this is daddy's room now that's kind of how i explained it to him i put it in terms right. I'm, i've been working with little kids for forever i put it in terms he can understand the way mommy tells you to go to your room this is daddy's room um and he went he was fine there right. were literally no issues he the the guards got to know him. They let him pick which little, you get a, you got a little, use a little card thing. He gets to do it. I turn everything into education. Right. So when you go, it's like, you're looking for right. cell block D number 40. So we're like, we're in there like, okay, D 49, 48, 40. Like we made it into a whole little right. thing. He would get that 30 minutes with his dad. And I think he just appreciated it. He got to be on the phone. He got, and he just enjoyed it. It's like a little phone. You would talk through that. Um, and I think he just enjoyed it. At right. this point now, he gets uh, in-person visits. He gets to see him in person now. Um, so he loved so, that. But yeah. You know, and I nice. know people are, li people are listening. And, you know, and some may say, you know, how did she? It's so amazing how you say that this is the best way for him. Yeah. I think she's froze again. And like I said, you know, this can you hear me story you know like i always tell you all this is this is her story and so you know did she take him continuously but she is still facilitating a healthy relationship she's still frozen i'm gonna wait this is she still wanted to facilitate a healthy relationship with her son and his father and so sometimes you know it may not this this type of um visit may not fit everybody but it's just a blessing to see here's a young mother going to school working and still trying to facilitate a healthy relationship with the father and son even though he's incarcerated because in the long run that he's going to be able to say even though my wasn't present but he still is present because she's still trying to keep that with them going and you know and i commend her from doing that because sometimes we as mothers we want to protect our children at all costs and so for her to even have the courage and and be selfless she wanted the best for her son and so like i said it may not work for everyone you know this is just her story and it worked for her and her son and so that's why you know it's so important that we don't get in judgment of people because even though his father is incarcerated they still are building a relationship and so and if he gets out they will already have that bond because you have fathers that are out and still absent you know yeah. you, you still have fathers that yeah. are out and walking around and they feel absent but 
here's a story, a beautiful story, that here's a father that's incarcerated, but him and his child have an amazing relationship. So what did, yeah. so did Caden ever say people teased him about his father being incarcerated? And if they did, how did you prepare him for that? Um, Caden's still so young. Can you hear me now? I'm sorry, it's storming here, and I think uh -huh. that's why I keep. I'm in Waldorf. It's storming, okay, okay. and I think it, okay. it was storming. So I think that's why I keep messing that. But I just keep logging off and joining again. Okay, that's fine. Um, yeah. But he 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 hasn't went through that yet. He's been in school. If with, you have to walk around, it's, it's and get pretty. A if you have to walk around to get a good signal, just do it. <laughs> Let me know. Can you hear me? So she can you hear me? Um, she's still going in and out. She said there's a storm. So if she comes back on, she has to move around. We, we're still going to do this um, interview because I think it's so powerful um, that she is able to tell us her story. And Can just you hear me? know that, uh-huh. Like I said, you got to walk around, walk around. <laughs> <laughs> I have I had people... <laughs> I had people, one lady had to go outside to get a signal and then come back in. So we're just going to make it work. Yeah, However you have to flow, we're just going to make it work. But, you know, yes, it's, it's um, amazing it's what we as weather today. Would do. Yeah, but it's amazing what we as mothers would do for our children. Yes, it is. And so I completely, completely agree. So... And so the last thing, where is Caden anxiety as of today? Uh, it's, I mean, let's say, can you can, can you hear me okay, Aunt Donna? Is he good with it? Can you hear me? You're going in and out, but just find you another spot. Hold on, I'm gonna turn the <laughs> wifi back find her on. Another spot. Let's see. Okay. But let me know if you can hear me now. Can you hear me? We'll, we'll figure it out. If you, um, <laughs> if you have to, we can you hear me to, now? Um, do it. If not, then we, we can come back. Um, just a little bit, but if we if we can get through at least ten more minutes, so we um, it's raining in um Maryland where she's at. So if her and I have to continue our interview. Um, tomorrow we would do that because I think her story is so amazing and it's going to help other young mothers. You may not be in a situation where your um, his father may be incarcerated, but you um, you are in a different situation. The thing that I hope you take from her story is if the parent is incarcerated or whatever, it's going to have a relationship with their and like I said, for me, just hearing her story about a man that fathered a child with her that's incarcerated, she is still cultivating a relationship. She's still cultivating a healthy relationship. And like I said, some fathers are walking around the street, even living around the corner. They're not even having a relationship with their children. So I commend her on that. Are you good? I'm back. <laughs> When she's See, let me come to my bedroom, see if it works then. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and so we're gonna, um, you asked I about just where say, anxiety is I now. I still commend what, yes, it's amazing. Um, he has, I mean, on a scale from like one to a hundred, I mean, it's, I mean, where I say it used to be at like a 99 and then maybe a 70, he's at probably like a, a, a 15, a 10, like. We barely have any issues. He's been in second grade. We moved, um, cause him and I moved to Waldorf and got our own place. So that meant he got a new school and everything else. And I just knew it was yeah. going to go rough. Virtual learning has been amazing. He's back in school. He's been back in school since February. He hasn't had any issues. His teacher loves him. He's excelling. So no, no problem. His anxiety is fine. Um, and he's just at this place now where he has so much personality. You see the post I make about him. He has so much personality and he just has such a yes, big everything. So <laughs> yes, he just has such a big everything now. So, so no, anxiety be gone. You, I, and I just want to say, I, I love you. And I love the fact that 
you know, even going through all of that with, you know, Jamal's incarceration, because he is an amazing guy, you know, he just got <laughs> caught up or whatever, he's an amazing guy. And, but I, I commend you because a lot of mothers would be like, no, my kid is not going to see that joker. He can just stay in there, you know, yeah. he did this. that just shows you who you are and how, you know, your mom then raised you because you could have easily said, forget you and just dismiss the whole thing. But because you thought about Caden and not you, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, if you would have took it from him, because he's already been taken from him, but if you would have right. did that, then Caden probably could have had some type of resentment. And for you to just say, you know what, I am going to do what I have to do to make sure he has a healthy relationship. Because like I said, you got fathers living next door. They ain't exactly. Doing exactly they, they, and they, that they're not doing anything so, so go ahead i think my biggest thing that i kept thinking about is that um so many people have lost their parents you know so many people have lost their parents yes. so many parents yes. have passed away who am i to take that away from him if his dad is still here you know i'm, I'm not going to be that woman that says no mm -hmm. you you can't have no he's not going to be in his right. life no i'm just i've never been that type of person that's not my decision i'm not god and I'm not, I'm not going to play god either i prayed on it i talked to god about it i talked to my mama about it and i made the decision that i thought was best for me and i know a lot of women wouldn't have made the same decision as me a lot of people no, wouldn't have no. said oh i'm going to take my three-year-old to, to a jail that's okay. Exactly. I respect their decisions. I love it. I respect their decisions. That's perfectly fine. But for me, I wanted to, I needed that relationship to continue. My son needed to know who his dad was. Um, and that was going to be that. And now what? Almost six years later, he has an amazing relationship with his dad. They talk. He loves talking to his dad. He gets excited. He counts down the days until they She's can do another out. Skype He's again. Um, so it was amazing. I'm going in and out. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, and I just want to say it, it is amazing. And, you know, just to see how you are, see how you have so grown up, thriving, and just doing <laughs> the best for Kaden. It's amazing. So now that you're in this new season of your life, I like to say um, you finished school, you was working, and I love the pictures that you have. I have these pictures. This is my favorite picture. I think oh, I'm having fun. Donna. But, uh, oh, I told you. <laughs> and so and you you said even when like you was, you know, working full time. And so now I love the fact that you said Caden and Mama don't give up. And so yeah. that for me because coming from being father incarcerated up until now, and you saying that was your saying, and that's so powerful because you're teaching him no matter what we go through, no matter what adversities that we face, mommy and Kaden don't give up because no, we don't. It's a testimony now because dad is incarcerated, and you guys haven't given up. He's still mm -hmm. thriving, you're still doing amazing, and he's doing amazing, and so that is so powerful, and you know. You should Thank just you. embrace that Thank because you. he's only like that. He's only like that because of you, because, Aww. you know, you had your support system. And speaking of support system, if you didn't have your mom, do you think you would have been in a different place? Oh, absolutely. Can you hear me? Can you hear me okay, Aldana? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> my mom, and I said that in that article, my mom is the reason I am the woman that I am, the mother that I am, the woman that I am, yes. my strength. Yes. Everything comes from yes. Missy McLean, um, all of it. Yes. My mother yes. literally pours so much into me. When I felt like I was weak, like I said, that woman was calling me multiple times a day in 2015, Aldana, just to make sure I ate. Just to make sure I ate. Even now, right now, I live in Waldorf. She lives in Brandywine. Um, Caden, because, you know, a lot of the kids didn't go back to school. I have to be at work at 7. Caden's school doesn't start till 9. I drop him off. She meets me every single morning, our daughter, to drop him off with her. And then at 9 o'clock, because she's working from home, she then has to stop her work time at 9 o'clock to drive her grandson to school, past my house, to school, right, and right. then drive back home. 
And granted, none of this is too far, but it's still her going out of her way and she does it with no problem. I thank her every single day and she's like, Gina, I'm his grandmother. I, right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm honored that right. I get to do it. And I'm like thanking her. I'm like, thank you, Ma, I appreciate it. Anything, it, my life is possible because I have my mother, like 100%. And like I said, she just speaks so much strength into me. And it, it doesn't matter what is going on. If I need to call my mother on Donna, it, it, the sky could be falling and I'm calling my mother and she's like, Gina, we'll get through this. We're going to make a way. Like anytime something's happening, says Gina, we're going to get through it. What it is, it so, can be the end of the world. So and she says, we're going to get through it. when you were in school and you and Kaden, so you and Kaden, when you started your bachelor's degree, it said that mm -hmm. you, you know, did your work. And sometimes, you mm -hmm. know, you said you didn't, depending on how your day was, it was depending on, you know, how much time you gave Kaden. But then I like yep. it when you say when you told him you was going to do homework together. So what did it make it easier for him to understand? I still love you, but everything that I'm doing for you, you it's know, going you. to school, it's going to better our lives. Us, yep. So did you yes. understand? Um, you know, okay, mommy. So in that article, I don't know if you saw it where I put it. I basically said, I had to put it, I, I've said the same thing um, earlier in this conversation. Everything with Kaden, I put it in ways that he can understand. Mommy has to go to school. Mommy has to go to work because you like a lot of toys. I got to be able to afford those toys, buddy. If you want all these toys and Kaden literally wants anything that he sees, he likes, he has the most expensive taste and he don't understand his mama is broke and he wants everything. So uh, to this day, it's the same thing. Mommy has to work. Which granted now he knows like, oh, she goes to work to be able to provide for me. But back then it was, oh, she's in school. Oh, she's working. Oh, mommy has to do this to better herself. So it, yes, he, the toy thing is what got him and what kept him going, the toys. <laughs> so, and then, you know, they talked about in your article, um, Mm -hmm. about how statistics shows that you know, young women that have children earlier, you know, mm -hmm. have a harder time. And I asked the question, you knew that you did not want to fit that statistic that they said. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So when I did knew you I did not. Realize that, no, I'm not going to be in that number with everyone else and you wanted more. I, um, She's I've all, can though. you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. I've always, I've yeah. always said, um, I've always said I wasn't going to be a statistic. That was the reason I was graduating with honors. Right. That was the reason I was going to make the president's honor roll. Right. That was the reason I made the dean's list. That was the reason I'm going back to school. Right. That is the reason why B's are unacceptable in my house. My son brings home A's. All of those things are the reason why I, I push the way I do, why I have such high expectations for Caden and myself. Because we were not going to be statistics. I'm already so, a statistic. So a young you black sure mom. He, had, he kept his grades up and he had a standard. Absolutely. Kaden has a, Kaden does not bring B's in my house. We, we bring A's. And my mom always says, Gina, B's. And I say, yes, because the day I tell him a B is okay is the day he thinks a C is okay. <laughs> and it's not. I want him to think an A is okay. And then if he gets a B, he's like, uh, I got to try harder. That's what I need. I need him to try harder because think about it. I'm already a statistic. I'm a young black mom with raising a sing. I'm a single young black mom raising a son whose father's incarcerated. I was already a statistic from the beginning. I wasn't going to be the same statistic they expected of me. That wasn't going to happen. So from the beginning, that's always been my thing. I was not going to be the statistic that everyone already put on me. All the bias that was on me, all the different um, right. stigmas that are already out there about young black women raising sons. I wasn't going to be any of that. So that was going to be something that I strive for. And that is why we are beating out those stereotypes and those statistics and everything else. You you breaking up just a little bit. Move around a little bit. Let me see. I've been moving, okay, girl. Move I've been moving. So why is she? Can you still hear me? Can you guys yes. still hear her? Um, hey, Angie, thank you guys for joining. So she's off again. So we're going to try. I have so much I, I want to ask her, but 
So as you can, can you see, hear me, she's can you hear me doing yet? amazing. Um, I can hear you. You keep going in and out. Um, um, you might have to move somewhere else and we're going to see, because I still have I so much moved. I want to Let me move again. Yes, ask away. I'm trying just, to move. Just, just keep moving around. It don't matter. We just, we do this anyway. I'm moving. Yeah, go. So you can keep you're asking. You with your best. Asking. So when yes, would you start your master's program? You froze. Can you hear me? I start in August. No, you still froze. Hold on. I'm gonna get hey, off. Mo you you froze on you froze on our end. So she's froze. So we're gonna try it again. Thank you guys for just hanging in there with us. Um I hope you guys are really um uh really um just just getting some vital information on how amazing her story is being a young mother a child and then you have your partner incarcerated and how she chose to continue to have a relationship um uh, to to have a relationship to continue to you know, make sure their relationship is good. So when will you start your um, master's program? In August. I start um, for educational counseling. Okay, Angie, thank you. Because on my end, it looks like you're frozen, but Angie said you're clear. Thank you. Because she's, you know, okay. Angie's up there too. So she said you're clear. Okay, and she perfect. said now, she said now you have to, hopefully, um, I'm back now. So I might be back. I, you, okay, so you said you wanted to open a mental health clinic. So yes, ma'am. Did you want to open the mental health clinic before um, Jamal's incarceration and having anxiety, or is this something you wanted prior to all this taking place? Um. So I wanted to be a teacher. That's kind of always been my thing. I wanted to be a teacher. Um, and I think the older I got, it changed the capacity as to what, how I wanted to help children change. And I realized how important mental health was. Um, and then once Caden started right. having his pro his issues with anxiety, it really hit me the need for this and not just outside of the schools, but inside the schools and then working in the school system. And really, I was a special right. ed assistant working in the school system and really getting to see how much those kids cling to you and how much they need someone that they can talk to, someone they can trust. Um, having all those things were just little all those little things like that all just kind of started playing in my head and i'm like you know we need and we need we need more young black so in my very first class intro to psychology i always you know you you take little bits and pieces and you keep it in my intro to psychology class it was yeah, taught by yeah. um a caucasian woman she was amazing and i remember her saying i want you right. guys to keep this with you you when you start whatever you decide to do if you decide you want to open your own practice i want you to keep in mind that the number one reason people don't go back to see a therapist is because they felt like they could not relate to them they felt like they did not understand what they were right. going through so when she told me this as a white woman she is telling us right. i want you all to understand the power that you have in your skin because not enough people in this field look like you and we need more people that look like you right. because i have clients myself exactly. that want to that want to come but they don't feel like i can understand them and she was honest and she said and on some level i'll never be able to understand what you all go through as black people so that was her biggest thing and she was in a i've kept in touch with this woman four years later because she was that's how amazing she was with just being so upfront with just being so honest and that stuck with me and that is one of the things that also made me say Gina you need to open your own practice this is what you need to do right and so will you have it in a predominant area or would you um Angie says she worked with special education classes and IEP. So what area, because you're going to stay in Maryland. So would it be in a low um, poverty area or would it be somewhere fancy, if you will? 
Oh, no. It'll definitely be in the low poverty. It's going to be in every impoverished area you can think of. I want all the little black kids that pay, that all the little black kids that are deemed bad, <laughs> that are told they got ADHD. No, bring them all to me. We're going to talk this through. We're going to unpack what's really going on. Because um, I don't think people realize that the, the, tra right. the trauma that black kids or black people have to see every day um, in these areas, when they are in these areas, like DC right now, who has a different killing every day. Those things are traumatic on kids and they also have a lot to do with their mental health. And instead of going to school and telling this kid that he's bad or he's not listening, really get dig deep and see what's wrong with that kid. And that is what we need more right, of because right. we need to understand that the traumatic events and the traumatic things that this kid is seeing are also things that have a lot to do with why his behavior is like this. But instead of, instead of doing that, we'll just label them. We'll be quick to label that kid and say, this kid is a problem child. No, let's unpack it. Let's see what's really going yes. on with the kid. And we need more than that. So yes, no, I'm going to be in the areas where we need it the most because in the more <laughs> affluent areas, we have enough a lot therapists. Of times, say it again. Yeah. And a lot of times, you know, like you said, you know, being in education too, a lot of times kids don't know how to articulate what they're mm -hmm. going through. And so they have, we have teachers that say, oh, you're bad, you're this and you that, yep. but they don't look at, I, I say, we need to look at the whole child. Yes. We don't need to just say, well, you need to get it together because I always tell people, you don't know how their night was. You don't know exactly. what they went through in the morning to even get to yep. And then yep. when they come to us, and if we tear them down, how, how can we say they're bad? Because we're tearing them down when we may be their only safe haven. Exactly. And exactly. You have, exactly. Uh, son, you he could have easily been someone telling him that he was bad, exactly. not knowing his dad being incarcerated. They could have just easily went over exactly. with him, but because you was proactive, you didn't allow it to happen to him. And some kids don't yep. have that luxury. They just don't. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, Robin, Robin just made a I great point. She said, we really need these clinics. Oh, I love that one. I love that one too. Yeah. Um, yes. Robin said so we really I, need those clinics so, for adults as well. And yes, that's my okay. goal. I want to start with children. Robin said we really need this for adults as well. And that's my goal. I want to start with children, but my goal is to be able to be a family therapist in general. I want to help the families because I think that's what we need. We need families in general, but I want to start with children because they need us. The children, if I can start with the children, then I can help the future, you know? Uh, if I can start with them, then I can start to help the future. I can start making a way. So, um, how, how, um, much of a financial struggle it was trying to work, go to school mm -hmm. and take care of Caden. So how, how did, you know, the financial piece play a part in you getting to where you are now? Um, Finance because my mom, and mom was always to help if I really she needed it. You should go out. Can can you hear me? Can y'all hear me? I can hear you. Thank yeah. You guys can y'all hear me? Thank you guys can y'all see me? Joining. Cause... With the financial piece, trying to make sure everything. In... Huh? I'm seeing if they can because I know I, I want to know if they if can, can see me. Hear her. Cause she's frozen again and sorry if you guys are just coming on thank you um it's raining in maryland where she's at so we're just oh gonna, it's aunt donna this interview um like aunt i told donna, her she you. Can, can move around just move around because you you're frozen on my end but angie if you're still here can you um see if you can still hear her she's frozen on my end so if you guys are just joining we are talking to gina jackson she is my niece she is my brother's um daughter and we have been talking about her life as far as her um baby's father being incarcerated and how she has allowed their relationship to continue even in his um incarcer incarceration and so you know a lot of 
allow him to still go visit him when he is being are not incarcerated that do not have a relationship with their if they don't exist but then she gina allowed her son to go to the prison to still cultivate that relationship and she said they have an amazing relationship because she could have easily said he is not going he is not going to go see him you know that was his choice that he made un you know unwise decisions so therefore but she didn't say that she did not say that because she could have easily said that um she's still frozen but we're gonna still go Aunt, on if she comes Aunt back Donna. On. and if not we will still do another live because franny like I said, franny text her and tell her it's hers she might have young, to she might have know, to cut it off she out all this took place and how she has bounced back how she's still thriving to be even better you know she's finished her bachelor's degree going on to get her master's all with all this trauma and making sure her son's well uh, mental health is still um together and intact and gina can you hear me Yes, I can hear you. So, you might like have to, I said, you might people, have to restart um, the live. Don't realize that mental health is very, very serious, and we have to not look at people in judgment. We have to be there for them because sometimes your childhood plays a part of your traumas. It may not be, you know, your trauma may not be like my trauma, but a trauma is a trauma, and it's all about your support system is all about how you cultivate it, but it's also a choice of how you want to start healing in your trauma. Because sometimes we can get so complacent and say, because I went through this or because I went through that, we don't choose to flourish. You know, we've all had different traumas. We've all been, we've all been through some things. She went out again, so I'm gonna wait for her to come back on. But we can't always allow our traumas or our shortcomings, if you will, dictate to us to keep us stuck. Because sometimes it's easier for us to stay stuck because it's easier for us to relate. But then when you take a step back and say, do I allow what I'm going through to keep me in this place? Because we, can, because we want the familiar, but when it's unfamiliar, we don't want that. Okay, just send, just send me another request and I'll bring you back in. Okay, and so we don't want the, un we want the familiar because if I can keep saying, they say they can see me, but yours is freezing. Okay, so they said they can see Gina, but mine's is freezing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop off and hop back on and we're gonna see how it goes and, um, if not, then I'm going to go off and come back on um, to see because they're saying it's on my end. So if it's on my end, I'll go off and I hope you guys come back on so we can um, wrap it up. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to go off and then I'm going to um, come back on.